All right. Hello there, health coaches. I'm super excited about today's topic. I think it is going to feel very validating, very empowering as women, whether you're just starting out as a health coach or if you've been in the industry for a long time, like myself and my guest, Stephanie Dodier, who I will introduce in just a moment. I've been running around like crazy though. I just need to breathe and like center myself because I gotta say like the past few weeks have been a blur and Stephanie knows what I'm talking about here. Blur of travel here, there and everywhere. I'm just slowly getting back into routine for fall. It was like the Poconos with the kids and Cancun with my boyfriend. And then I was just up in Boston last weekend for a friend's 50th birthday. So, you know, just very unsettled when you get off your routine. And I notice, I don't know if this happens to all of you, but I notice whenever I travel, obviously it takes a lot of energy, but it's my digestion that takes the biggest hit. Do you notice that too? Like I'm guessing right now for any of you listening or for your clients, this could also be an issue as they're coming back from summer craziness and travel. And uh, I'm probably not alone here. So it is a fantastic time to tell you about the human intestinal microbiome certification from Primal Health Coach Institute and a free gift that I have finagled for all of my listeners, completely free. I want you to go to healthcoachpower.com slash microbiome. And when you do that, you're going to get two sample lessons from the human intestinal microbiome certification program. How cool is that? You can peek right into the course. Take it. It's free. If you like what you see, then you'll also get 25% off the full program. The folks over at Primal, if you don't know them, they are awesome. I've got a great relationship with their team. In fact, I was just on their podcast like a couple weeks ago. What I love about all the stuff that they put out, all their educational materials are very much science-based. This microbiome certification program allows you to address a wide range of gut issues, enabling clients to optimize their microbiome for improved skin, immune, brain health, energy levels, you know, all the things, of course, because the gut influences everything in your body. And what's really cool, this course was developed in partnership with Dr. William Davis, who is a renowned cardiologist and New York Times bestselling author of say it with me, wheat belly. I thought you might know that. So if you're interested in learning more about gut health, this should be a no brainer. I asked Primal to release a sneak peek for you just to get a sense of what the program is like and how they approach health and wellness topics. Go grab it for free right now. It's at healthcoachpower.com slash microbiome. And if you decide to take the certification program, you will get 25% off just for being part of my community. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I also want to let you know that my very popular online courses for health coaches will be back and open for enrollment later this fall. So if you're thinking of creating an online course, you know, turning on that additional income stream, I'm going to show you how to do it. I've created many, many successful online courses through the years. I have a system. So if you want to join us, Put your name on our no obligation wait list. You're going to get best pricing and bonuses just for having your name on there at healthcoachpower.com slash online course wait list. All right. Now on to today's episode with Stephanie Dodier. Steph, let me get you off mute. Thank you so much for joining us. You're just full of offers, like the amazingness of what you're having for people is great. I want to be on your list. <laughs> We got so much going on over here. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, breathe, breathe. Take it all in. Lots going on this fall. How are you doing? Fantastic. Looking forward to this conversation. Absolutely. Can you introduce yourself to my audience? And you've been on the show before, but we have lots of new listeners. And just tell us a little bit about what you do. I am a clinical nutritionist and I approach health and food from a non-diet approach. So I talk about health and food without restriction and an acceptance of what is. We do a lot of body image work in my world and a lot of mindset. And uh, yeah, I'm a woman who runs a business. You're a woman who runs a business. You certainly do. And you've been going right at it for a long time. Yeah. How long have you been in the industry? In this industry, 10 years. So I was 15 years in my, so I call it my first phase of life. 
I don't know if you know about this like spiritual glance on like your first life and your second life. My first phase of life was in retail business mm -hmm. for 15 years. And I broke the glass ceiling, was the first woman in all the position I was in and burned myself out and came to the world of health as a way of healing myself. And as a somebody who has fibers of business in her, I just built a business out of this. So 10 years. I had uh, started for the first three years having a clinical, a traditional clinical nutrition practice with the receptionist and appointments and seeing <laughs> people like, you know, yeah. building. And that was like, that's almost 11 years ago. And three years into that, I heard the word online business and the word digital nomad. I'm like, what is this? And I went and Google and find out that you can run a business online and you can offer all your service online. Back then, there was no Amy Porterfield and all that stuff didn't exist. And I decided that that was going to be my next business. So I closed down the practice, sold the building, and then started to learn about this online world and transfer all my business online. So it's been seven and a half years now that I'm strictly online. Wow. And it is a very different type of business. A hundred percent different. Yeah. Wow. So because... you kind of made that shift online before everybody did it with COVID. You were way ahead of the curve. Oh, like I want to tell you an experience. So back then I did a webinar and it took seven different software that I had to buy yes. <laughs> for me to be able to do a webinar online. I had to hire a VA it was so complicated that's when it started for me where now you just click a button on zoom and you have people in a room um but it was a huge growth personally of all the skill set i had to learn in order for me to facilitate my dreams of being online because there was a reason behind that is because i wanted to travel mm -hmm. i wanted the freedom of having an online business and it was a lot of learning and it's a lot of investment. So I invested money, I invested time, I invested my passion into this. And now I'm a full-time digital nomad. So I can work anywhere in the world. Live in the dream. I my love dream. <laughs> uh, I, I feel you because while well, I'm not typically traveling the world, I did do a lot of travel recently, but my whole thing was I want to be home when my kids get off the bus. And just to be able to do that and not be traipsing yes. back and forth into the city, I am grateful for it every day. So we've both been in the industry of online marketing and coaching for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, when I look at what you're doing, and uh, I'm like, wow, you know, she's fearless. She just does the thing. She says what she has to say. She makes the offers. She just goes for it. When you look around in what is a female dominated coaching industry, do you see a lot of that? I see people like you and me and they dominate their niche. Like people who have this mental ability to like make their dream a reality like take action from that their thoughts about their dream they dominate their niche and then there's a lot of people a lot of women self-identified women who don't and i think it has to do with women being in business and living in a society that is not structurally set up for us being in business like the role of a woman in today's society, even though we have freedom, like we can do what we want, doing what we want is still going against the grain. And it's going against the grain for me, a lot of it has to do with our own, what we call mindsets, our thoughts, and the way we are socialized to think as us, as business people, us as women who demands and ask for money and sell stuff. The way we think about ourselves is still from the old structure that women shouldn't be doing that and we shouldn't be demanding money and we shouldn't be investing money. So for me, the liberation of women in business doesn't come with the rules of accessibility because structurally we have that is the way we think. 
that's the part that hasn't changed. I mean, just in even just a generation or two, it's changed tremendously what we're allowed yeah. to do or we can yeah. do. But I mean, when push comes to shove, who's picking the kids up from school when they're sick? Who's expected to be the caretaker for the elderly parents, et yep. cetera? And like, just think about what we do fundamentally. We go out into the world, we create a product, whatever product it is, coaching session, course, and we go out into the world and we demand money. We demand, we're asking people in the world to give us money. And that is traditionally not what women are meant to do. And again, we're allowed to do it now. It's not that there's a rule somewhere that says we can, but our thoughts. How many of your clients, and I know my clients are that, they feel really uncomfortable asking for money. Oh, yes. All you health coaches listening right now, right? Isn't it just the worst moment of the consultation where you have to name your price? Ah, and you just start to sweat and stammer. Why? I think it has to do, for me, my perspective, it has to do with a very common mindset tra trait many women have, and I had, and still in certain area, I have not enough. Who am I to ask for this amount of money? What is my worth? Like, and unfortunately in the business coaching, unfortunately too many coaches say like, ask your worth, your worth a lot of money, right? Ask for that amount of money, but we don't believe ourselves being worth that amount of money. Right. So when we think about asking for the thousand dollars or the two thousand dollars for our coaching package, we have the thought, oh, my God, like she's never going to want to pay this. Oh, my God, like I'm not going to be able to to like service this person for this amount of money. Who am I to ask this? And that translates in that discomfort that we feel in our body and the shaky voice we have on the consultation. Right? Like we shake, we become all red. <laughs> like, or what I see the most often is people just like get to the price portion of the consultation. They go really, really fast, right? Because they're so uncomfortable, they want to get it over with. So, what are your thoughts about money? What are your thoughts about what are your worth as a coach? I think this is where the work for us lies into. And because I have done that work, and you probably did, I don't know all your coaching background, but I'm sure you've done a lot of that work. I show up more confidently than the average person in my niche because I have done the mindset work around money and my worth and my business. But I think it's accessible to all of us. I think we can dominate the industry of coaching. And when we look at the coaching industry, it is not dominated by women it's unfortunately dominated by this men I mean, we have a but we're the consumer yes. we consume it but the big player in the coaching industry are still men i was thinking you know you wouldn't still be around like you know 10 years into this career i so i've been uh, you know i graduated from health coaching school 14 years ago we yep. wouldn't still be around if you can't get through that whole money mindset thing. Yes. Am I worth it? Is it okay for me to ask for money? I mean, my first life, like you said, your first life was in retail, mine was in advertising. And that's an industry just riddled with sexism and with I make a third mm. of what my male counterparts make. And, you know, so to ask for money feels like it's a huge ask like you're gonna get a no I used to get a no from my bosses when I asked for even a small raise and what I love now is I know I have unlimited earning potential and the only thing that gets in my way is me yes and I want to say to that when we think about money because we have been taught and socialized to believe that the amount of money we ask for is a sign of our worth. That's when many coaches put themselves in position for asking for like a price that they don't feel comfortable selling. So we'll just give an example here, right? $3,000 for a six month package of coaching. 
but in their mind and in, in their body, they don't think they're worth $3,000 because somebody told them like charge your worth, they're charging this price and they end up in consultation with shaky voice and people end up saying no, not because they're not worth 3000 it's because they don't present like a $3,000 coach. Hmm. Hear me out on this. What if we, and this is what I teach to my student, what if money was only a tool instead of a sign of your worth? If money was a tool in your business for you to create the result that you want. So for an example, when we're talking about pricing, what if instead of charging $3,000 because that's what you think you're worth, what if instead you were charging $1,000, but you feel uber confident about charging $1,000 and then you sign six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 client for $1,000, you service your client at $1,000, you get rave of you, you build your confidence and then you double your price. So that $1,000, the price you charge is a tool for you to build your confidence instead of a sign of your worth. But because as women, we are thought and this is the patriarchal conditioning that our worth, that our self-esteem is the result of what other people think of us. We don't use money as a tool. We use money as a sign of our worth. I Just like, like in lie. my niche, the size of your body or the shape of your body or your look is a sign of your worth, it translates in business. So, so in my, when I coach clients, my business is on diet your life. So it's about helping women stop dieting and accept their body. What I have found is when women do this work, they, then they come to business with a whole other mindset about money because they have separated their worth from their body image. And then when I propose to them to separate your worth from the amount of money you charge or you make in your business and see money as a tool, they're like, got it just like my body is a tool money is a tool so there's I a parallel between analogy. the two yeah wow now when i think of all the health coaches that have passed through my world and yeah. are listening to this podcast we have some who are younger maybe in their 20s yes. um, just starting out you know we have others who are like myself, midlife, you have kids and others that are like past retirement. But where I would really draw the distinction, like there's two kinds yeah. of health coaches, those who are reliant on the income they are making themselves mm -hmm. and those who are not because they're independently wealthy because they are married and their spouse yeah. has a well, good paying job, right? I would just draw a very stark dividing line between those two categories. And now you and I both fall on the side of we are reliant yes. on our own income. And how does that change the game? So I'm going to say something controversial because I'm a controversial person in everything that I do, right? You were telling, we were talking about my story everywhere that I've been, I've like, had a different opinion than most people. So when we think about being financially secure, for me, I'll say to the young coach, go get a job. Go create safety in creating a reoccurring income. It could be a part-time job. It's not gonna be a career, but it's gonna be a place where you're gonna get money, enough to pay your rent, enough to pay your grocery bill. So the safety of your life, because we have to be honest with each other, money is the safety, it's the trading exchange into this world to, for us to feel safe, we need money. You will not put the weight of your safety on your business. So now your business becomes a place of joy, becomes a place of safety. And I guarantee you, and I've seen it over and over again, you're gonna grow faster because you have that job on the side and you're not in a despair mode when you come to sell it. I did a, something similar for me. I, when I transitioned between the clinical practice and the online business, there was a year and a half where I was doing both. It was demanding, but I kept up my clinical practice until I had enough in the other one to be able to draw an income. I didn't just close down everything, zero income, and then launch the other one. So I would say creating safety around money 
is one of the element that will help you fast track your growth and go get a job. Yes, I agree with you 100%. You agree? A lot of people think, well, I can't start my business because I have another job. No. But when you smell of desperation, it is not attractive. No, you know? convincing is the number one repellent in, in marketing. Generally, consultation or social media, people will sense it. There's just a third sense. <laughs> it really is. So slow, yes. Yeah. Get a job, do what you got to do. So if you are like Stephanie and I, you know, reliant on yourself, you don't want to be waking up in no. a cold sweat every day going, where is my next client coming from? Because then they're just not going to. So and you know what's really interesting is we talk so much about nervous system these days, right? We hear this trauma and nervous system everywhere. Meanwhile, the same person says my program is trauma informed and nervous system informed. They're telling people like, go all in go all in makes your nervous system very dysregulated and forms a trauma around your business you don't need that <laughs> safety first agree and I mean, this I, I, go, ahead. go ahead oh i was just gonna say i've heard uh, coaches say well i was going to work with this business coach or do this business program yeah. they told me that i should take out a line of credit on my house oh, no. open it i mean i sell courses and help health coaches and that's my livelihood but i don't ever want anybody going in some stupid debt to take the course that's you know i'm not charging tens of thousands of dollars i think that really puts coaches in a bind and it's not necessary you know because you're, you're right once you're not feeling safe now you are panicked it's all yes. going downhill as a coach you need to be centered you need to be grounded yeah because your client come to you because they don't feel centered they don't feel grounded they feel afraid of whatever food, their health, and whatever's going on in their life. They need somebody on the receiving end of that that feels safe. Exactly. Okay. So these are um, for those who are afraid they don't have backup income. Yeah. What about for all our health coaches who have the backup income? Go all in. Like if you have the income, so let's think about it from another way. Let's talk about money. Let's talk even about time. For me, these again are tool. Money is a tool. Time is a tool. Where do you invest your time? So I just had this conversation a week ago with someone who's financially stable and is a mom. And for her, she wanted to create that business, but she didn't want to take away the time from her, her child, right? That's a very common circumstance. Where you invest your time is where you're going to get a result back out. So if you invest your 50 hours in a week in your child, and you will get that return back at some point in the relationship with your child, but your child will see you as completely dedicated to them. And that's going to create a certain relationship with your child. But what if you invested part of your time into your business as a tool to get the result in your business and your child or your partner or your grandkids see you as somebody who believes in their dream and grow and invest in their business. So for me, if the money is not an issue and you're safe, think about your time. Where do you invest your time to get the result that you want in your life? And again, let's talk about feminism in that. When a woman decides to take 10, 20 hours away from her child or her grandkids a week, now we've got the whole narrative of society saying what you're doing. You should be fully available for your child or your grandchild. And you, you require a lot of mindset, a lot of work on your own thoughts about you taking your time and investing it in your business. I like that image of like, let's fast forward five, 10, 15 years. Now, what is your relationship like? But now what is your home life like? Now, what is your financial life like? Yeah. Right? Because you're, you've invested it in a different way. And yet, what you just said, if you have a backup income, you have a spouse, you have savings, you have, um, I, I more often see the opposite. I see health coaches oh. going, well, it's not really important to me to make money. So- Hmm. I'd like to work with some clients and I'd like to grow my business, yeah. but it's kind of just stays here in lip service land and they don't go all in because they don't have to. What is your why then to go in business as a coach? That would be my question. So I've got like, when we think about the why we're thinking about 
what you want to create in your life, the reality you want to experience. And it's okay if you don't want to have a business. It's okay if the reality you want to create in your life is to volunteer and help people in need in your city. But what is the reality you want to create in your life? Are you just going along with what life has in store for you and co-creating the reality of other people by facilitating and helping other people achieve their dream? What is your dream? What is your intention into the world? What is it that you want to create? And be first of all, ask yourself that question. Identify what is it that you want to create? What is it that you want in your life? And then go for it all in. If it is to help people in need locally, and it's not about having a coaching business, that's okay, but go all in. And if it is to help people in a coaching, then go all in as well. Why is it, if that's what your dream is and you're not taking action, as you say, you're not in, why? I think this comes back to a lot of those same, like what women are supposed to do moments because like, and I know it very well because when I started out as a health coach, I was married. My husband made all the income. We literally had a conversation about it's okay if I didn't make much income because I had just left my career Mm. in advertising. And so it was okay if I wasn't profitable, we were going to be just fine. And guess what? I wasn't profitable. I worked my tail off, but because I had somewhere in my brain that it didn't matter, I probably was working on the wrong things, not the things that were going to necessarily generate income. I was going at it from a different perspective. It was a hobby. I loved my hobby. I put a lot of effort Mm. into that hobby, but I was not profitable. Talk to me. So when you look back now, I'm going to turn the table and interview you. Yeah. When you now that you know what you know, why is it that you weren't profitable? You were asking for not enough, not investing enough time. Like what was the lever? Oh, yes. I wasn't making enough offers as is so often the case (laughs) when we're not making enough money. You do need to make offers in order to make money. I was making some offers, but not nearly enough. Right. And it's because I didn't have to, I didn't have to run the numbers and go, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to pay the mortgage? Cause that stuff was all covered. So I just did what felt good. And again, like you said, there's a time and a place for that, but we, I find that we can be at odds in our own brain with, I want a health coaching business. And also, well, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. If, if that's, if that's, the, no, that's never going to work. It's never going to work. So why is two things for me? Why is your personal goal? Like like for me, let's talk about me. My why is to create freedom of location in my life so that I can travel. And my second why is to change how coaching, how health coaching is delivered for women. So the way that I teach health coaching is drastically different than a traditional way. And that gives me the desire to go and offer because I know every single person that goes through my program, every single woman that goes through my program will have a ripple effect on a hundred more women. It is because they will talk about their body or their relationship to food different, or if they're a professional, they will change hundreds of other women's lives. So what is your why at the higher level? Why do you want to coach women with their health? What change? Do you want to create in society for women? And how can you make that the fuel to go out and offer more of your services? Yes. And in retrospect, I can tell you, honestly, my big why back then, yeah, I just didn't want to be in advertising anymore. I was Got saving it. myself. I was making myself very busy and very involved with something else. So I could justify not getting another job in advertising, which is exactly what I needed at the time. But there was that that was it it was more just about me saving myself from a very toxic career but it all changed i've shared the story before on the show it all changed the day that you know i now had two babies i was working in between nap time and preparing meals and you know very little a lot of moms do this and my husband came home and he said uh no i'm not gonna fold the laundry i said can you fold the laundry he said no 
I said, can you please fold the laundry? You're just watching TV. Why can't yeah. you fold the laundry? He said, because I worked all day. And I said, well, oh. I worked all day, right? We have that. And he said, you didn't work. I'm tired of funding your hobby. Daggers out of everybody's <laughs> eyes who just heard that, right? Okay. Yeah. I said, oh, I knew where this <laughs> was going. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. He's a jerk, right? But he was right <laughs> Yeah. He was right. And the next day I sat down with a different view of what my business was doing and why I was doing it. And in a few months I started paying our rent. In a few years, I was able to pay our bills when he was laid off again. And now I, I make more than he does because my why changed. Yeah. Can we talk about money and dependence for women? Yes. Right. This is what you've expressed. Like it was like the circumstance of it was very misogynist, <laughs> but you had put yourself in a position to lose your independence. Mm -hmm. And that was not only deadly, potentially deadly to you, quote unquote, but it probably also put a lot of strain on your relationship because you were no longer equal. So I want to say that to all the women listening right now. When you put yourself in a position where you are dependent from your partner, and it could be in all kinds of relationship, any gender relationship. When you put yourself in a position to be dependent from your partner's income, it is at great strain to your relationship. It will show up in your relationship somewhere, somehow. Having a financial independence through your business, through a job, however it is, is how you create safety. Because when you know that you depends on your partner's income, you don't feel safe. And that's why the next morning you woke up, you're like, hell no, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's not going to work this way. I'm going to like go find my own money. And then your course of your business change because you felt really unsafe after these words. Am I correct? <laughs> Absolutely. I needed to create that for myself. And I didn't realize I'd be divorcing him a couple of years later. But the only reason I could do it, the only reason I could walk away is because I had that safety. Right. And so I don't wish that for everybody who's in a relationship. But I do wish this inner knowing that like I can take care of myself. And that comes first. Right? Yes. Just like we work with our clients. Yes, you take care of your kids. Yes, you take care of your community. But you have to take care of yourself first. Same. You got to know that you're taking care of yourself first in this regard, too. I think, I think Absolutely. that makes for a strong woman. It makes um, for a woman who feels safe. So one of the things I'm adamant is, and, and this shows up in the type of coaching that I do, I do what's called intersectional coaching, where we take the identities of people into consideration. And being a mom is an identity, being a wife is an identity, being a business owner is an identity. Like we all have, often they over for us hat that we wear. The answer is not because I have more hat, I have to work harder, right? That's never the answer. The answer is how can my environment adapt to this particular identity? So when you're, when we're talking about strong women, often to people listening, that translates as being more productive and working harder. That's not the solution. The solution is to demand more. If you're a mom, this morning I was just coaching a mom who wants to have her coaching business. She's got two child in tow. She can't even get half an hour to talk to me alone. She has a two child in tow. Why is that? Why is that that you building your business as a mom means that you have to do that while carrying two child and you cannot get full attention of your coach? That's not fair. Why is the environment around you doesn't allow you to go get a babysitter so you can have an hour alone with your coach to maximize your investments? Yes, I feel that. I feel that so hard. I remember when I put my first son in daycare, just one yes. day a week. And it, it seemed silly at the time, but it was like, I have to do this. Like, you have to demand the boundaries that are going to allow you yes. to grow as a human and not just as a support system for everybody else. 
Well, just, just as a mom, now you're trying to build your business owner identity while being a mom. And it cannot become at your expense of only sleeping four hours a night. Right. <laughs> like who, who just felt that so hard, right? <laughs> I want to read a comment from Carrie over here in the Facebook group. She posted this a few minutes ago. She said, I always held back because I was working full time and was afraid they'd find out. I was practicing on my own and fire me. And then someone asked if I were to get fired, what would I do? And my answer was give it my all. So I quit my full time in December and jumped in. She said, I love this conversation. It's not any different from how we coach people to eat healthfully and move their bodies. What's your priority? What stories are you telling yourself to get in your way? And how can you create the time to make it happen? She's right. It's the same thing. And a lot, I just want to say this for women, a lot of stories we tell ourselves are not our stories. There's society stories. There's what we call socialization. They're not you. You're not born thinking I have to like give all my time and my attention to my children. You're not born with these thoughts in your brain. You are socialized. You are taught to think this way. And when you make decision that don't align with these beliefs, that's when we start feeling guilt. <laughs> that's when we start feeling shame for like, I'm taking time for myself and I'm not supposed to. The not supposed to is not true. <laughs> That's just how society would like you to behave. And you're like, hell no, I'm building my business. And my child goes in one day babysitter a week. Yes, that is absolutely the path to making some headway here. And maybe it's not that you have a child, right? But maybe it's whatever, insert other obligations yes. here, insert what you think you should be doing here. Stephanie, you are a strong voice in the coaching world because you are out there, you are doing it, you are showing up, you are asking for money. I want everybody to follow you and just witness. That's it. That's all I'm asking for you guys. Witness how Stephanie does it. Follow people who are inspiring in this way, who don't hold back, who don't hide behind, you know, all the other things that they should be doing. Where can our listeners find you? podcast. So uh, on diet, your coaching podcast is podcast or professional where we talk about that kind of viewpoint on business. And also the going to be on the food podcast, which is more about like body image and confidence work and stephaniedose.com. Yes, good. I'm so glad that we were able to just touch, like, just take a little Look bite out of it. There's so much more. We could go, probably go on yes. all day long, but I appreciate your time. And thanks for being willing to show up and just say the things. I know it can be hard to hear for everyone listening. Mm. It can be hard to hear sometimes. If someone told me in the beginning of my health coaching career that I wasn't taking it seriously, I would have made me very angry. I know, but that's what we need to hear. Just like we need to hear that we're not, the worth is not the amount of money we charge. We need to hear that. The truth is if you want a business, it's gonna be hard. Like you're, this whole con, we could talk, do a whole show on bro marketing and like passive income. Can we just yeah. like a whole half an hour on, like how bullshit it is to think, I'm just gonna do a course and not do anything and push, 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 money's gonna yeah. flow in. Does that work like that for up? you? Oh, they just knock on my door. Yeah. You know? They just throw money through the mail slot. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> it all takes work and it takes time. And yes. so it has to be a priority. I, I think that's, what it is at the end yeah, of the day. six months to six figure. <laughs> like, I know, like all the experience coach, I say, what's your thought on six months to six figure? They all giggle because it's other bullshit. But that's what the new coaches are being sold. And they're like, well, it's six months now and I haven't made five grand. Must I'm the problem. No, no, no. It's what you were sold. That's the problem. Well, that's a whole other angle on what you that's think a is whole supposed show. to happen. A new <laughs> You guys, so much to talk about here. We're going to end for today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And we'll definitely be in touch talking soon. Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks Bye. for joining us.